Hello there, Planet Sewers. Welcome to episode two of my Houston Zoo inspired build. Today we are working on the McCall Cafe. And right now what I'm doing is making a template, so to speak, of this building. It is round, so in-game pieces are not large enough to fit everything I need in here. So basically I'm making a dome and what I'm doing is thinking about what kind of pieces I want. Uh, here I decided to go with two meters instead of four on the overhang, which later proves to be a problem. However, I do have a solution at the end. It doesn't quite fit how I wanted, but it works out. And so I'm just putting in little finishing detailing pieces so that I don't have to go around and do that when I get done with the dome. I do use Google Earth as a heavy reference and so I'm grabbing the color from over there so I can get the same color scheme going. Most of the buildings in the entrance have some gray and slate looking roofs or corrugated roofs. And then now that I have that little overhang, I'm looking through to find what roof options I have. I did not want to build a full custom roof like I did on the dome for the aquarium. It has a lot of pieces and eventually the game will struggle with the amount of piece counts I have and later as we go. With that in mind, I chose to use the in-game roof pieces and see how the design turned out. I think it turned out pretty neat. When I look at the aerial views on Google Earth, it does have similar shaping on the top. So I decided it was a good fit. And then I'm adding in my plaster walls so I can get the color on the inside. So I can save myself some time later and with struggles of duplicating all these little detail pieces. And these are techniques I picked up from watching several different YouTube creators that post their videos online through YouTube. There's a lot of content creators out there with some wonderful tutorials, which is where I learned a lot of these skills and then trying myself in game. One of the other things that was suggested by a content creator was download things from the workshop and then take them apart, see how they're put together. It's a good way to find pieces to build with that you never thought you could use in certain areas. And here you can see I'm trying to make that decision. Do I match the roof or do I match the building? I ultimately went with matching the building so that it would have nice smooth edges and decided I will fill in the roof pieces a little differently. And I left those openings instead of having an awkward angle with the other pieces to put in a door and then filled the other one in with just brick. And here I'm closing those gaps with a small corrugated piece. I wish more of the sets in game had some of these smaller non-grid pieces. So I tend to use certain sets a lot more because they have the non-grid options and some don't. So I'll make myself one little section of covers here and then grab those once I have it how I like it and move them around to the other sides where I have gaps and try to get those aligned where they won't stick out with too many hard edges and blend in. Now that I have one on each side, I can duplicate around and hopefully not have to do too much to get them in just right. And now that I have them all in place, I decided I did not like that little break in the actual roof. So I'm testing out to see if this will create a look that I like and give the effect that I'm looking for. So the inverted didn't look very good. So I went ahead and went with the other one and did the same process. Put one on each side and then duplicate them all the way around the building. And now we're inside. I was trying to keep the scale of this building 
the same as it looked on Google Earth from the aerial view and I did not want to make it too large to fit things inside so I had to make the choice of scale of the building in relationship to the other buildings in the entrance or scale of the building inside and then the outside would have to be larger so I went with the outside version to match everything and I may move that bathroom I placed in there um, when I was looking at Google Earth it didn't give me good views close up on the building I did find some images through Googling and noticed that it says bathrooms with an arrow going behind the building. So when I make my Houston Zoo visit, I'll see where those are and I may take those out and move them. It'll give me a little more room to decorate inside. And then speaking of that, and then we're going to go ahead and get some plaster walls going to cover up our vendor shops here and get those in place, get them the right color. And then I edited out placing the non-grid pieces. It was some tight corners there. It was hard to watch. And then here I've done my favorite thing. Now when I was looking at the inside, the game doesn't have the same style of lights, so I'm building my own. I had put out a whole bunch of different options and settled with the African, I'm not sure what piece that is called, but anyway, it's an African set, it's wood, and I just turned the whole thing yellow, so it didn't have the two different contrasting things, and put the aquatic light inside, grabbed my archer for height, and moved them all around before I did the chains got rid of my other items that I don't need except for a few over there and we're gonna put in the chains that are gonna hold our lights and give it some details in case anybody does zoom in way up here I want to know how are these things held well they'll be connected by chains and those little details sometimes do matter I notice the longer I play the game, the more I'll notice I didn't connect things very well and I'll go back and change them. And I notice here this light is a little higher than the rest of them, so I had to nudge it down. And then I went around, looked at my aquatic lights, made sure they were centered. Because of all the different pieces in here, it was difficult to highlight them and get them into place. I tried from every angle. Eventually I do get just the light and I'm able to nudge it around. And the rest of them I was able to grab pretty simply. That one just did not want to be moved. I thought about changing lighting settings, changed my mind. And going for my pathing I ended up changing some of that pathing later, and I'll probably change it again. And here we are with floors. So what I've used here is a small plaster piece, and I stole this idea from Koali Zoo, where Mike Sheets said he had put a piece of glass over the other piece, and it created a nice look. So that was the technique I used here. And I used really small pieces so that I could nudge them in a lot easier so they don't poke out on the other side. And those were my test pieces when I was thinking about different sizes. And then I'm grabbing that one in case I need a small set instead of a large set and setting it off to the side. So I'm just gonna go around, repeat these items create my floor, hide away the ones that are sticking out on the outside. So I finished my flooring. I'm going to get rid of my extra things here. And originally I did use circular pathing. Like I said before, I was trying to keep guests from going through the walls. I wanted them to go in through the door. 
and later I did have to connect it through the wall so that I could place picnic tables. And I did the same thing around the planters so that guests won't be walking through my nice big scenery pieces. I'm not the greatest at using these techniques to make plazas, so this is a new venture for me. I might just cover it with floors, but that's a lot of pieces, so we'll see. I might delete it all and try again, see if I can get it to work the way I want it to. For now, I'm leaving it that way. And then once I get done with the pathing, I go ahead and decorate this staff building I have back here. I just did it super simple, wasn't sure what it looks like or what even's really back there, but I do need a place for those vendors to take a break, so I just did it in a classic theme, right on the grid, simple pieces, and give it its little finishing touch, the staff sign. Then we're going to go around and add lighting underneath the eaves here so that at night there's some nice light coming off the building. You can go ahead and turn on light mode. Night, night mode, light mode. Anyway, you get the idea so that I can see how it looks. See if I want to change anything about it. Get those last few lights in. And back to daytime so that we can continue building. I'm not in the dark. I played franchise for so long getting to change whether it's nighttime, daytime, raining, snowing. I wasn't used to that. So when I first started building in sandbox mode, I would just keep building in the dark. Adding a few details inside. I had wanted to try to recreate the feel they had inside the Macaw Cafe. Unfortunately, I couldn't quite get the pieces to get to work like I wanted. So I took them off and just did this simple New World metal. So it has the essence of what it looks like inside the Macaw Cafe. When I was looking at some of the pictures I'm using as reference, I did notice the door to the cafe is in a different place than where I put it. So I needed to get rid of everything underneath it, turn it so it has the right orientation to the rest of the zoo. Now I'm ready to create the Macaw Cafe sign. I'm still learning how to use different pieces to make what I would like that isn't in game. And I've also used Ricey's fonts here. I hope I pronounced that right. The letters in game were not the right size and this font did a good job size wise. It's a little bit different than what the actual zoo has. Let me get all my letters together so I can put them on my sign and get them all orientated easily. So it's best to spell it out here and then move it afterwards. Macaw Cafe sign has a macaw on it so I'm laying out a lot of pieces so I can see how to create this macaw with what the game offers and so finding little small things I like to set them out as a little template and then I still will scan through sometimes king of macaws um, I do have a red fronted macaw as a pet we have there she is Ruby and then we also have four dogs I have two huskies and a corgi. So since we're doing the Macaw Cafe, I will leave Ruby in the background. Yeah, hello? Oh goodness. She likes to make a lot of noise, so sometimes my editing process is very slow because she will squawk or squeak or just make little noises, flap her wings, and I'll stop and redo that little section. So here is setting up the symmetry of the sign. I'm going to move the letters in a moment so that they're in the right places. 
And we're going to skip that fine tuning and go to our McCall creation. And I used many different pieces trying to figure out what works best. I ended up building the McCall's feet piece by piece. I couldn't find something that worked the way I wanted it to. To build the macaw, I used a reference picture so that I could try to keep the proportions similar to how the sign is in real life. And it's so hard looking at such a good picture of a great sign and trying to recreate this in game and not judge yourself too harshly with the differences between what it looks like in real life versus what you created with shapes and random in-game things. So I'm trying to get the body, I'm trying to decide if I want a circle, a half circle. Looks like I'm going to go with an oval and get the shading changed. Get a tail in there. Start the tail. The tail I initially put in, I'm going to take out and replace it with a different tail. As you can see, the first tail that I create seems to be a little too blocky in my opinion. I couldn't quite get the right angle I wanted and I couldn't get the effect of the feather. So my first go around, I just kind of left it as a placeholder and revisited once I built the rest of the bird. I really do hope we get a bird DLC in the future. A lot of zoos do have parrots. A lot of times they end up in zoos because they live so long. Their owners pass away or something happens and they get donated to zoos. Um, I know for our particular bird, she is endangered. Um, I think they only have less than a thousand in the wild. Most of them are pets. And she has a life expectancy of 80 years or more. They're not really sure how long they live. The oldest one in captivity or as a pet passed away from health issues and not natural causes. So Ruby is about eight years old right now. And so she's gonna be with us a long time. Hopefully somebody in our family will want to keep her when we can no longer care for her. Birds are fun pets, but they are a big commitment in their life span, as well as in their personalities, doing a lot of research before you get one, knowing what you're getting. So ours is a screamer. She makes a lot of noise. She's being pretty good right now, but she can get my huskies howling at the moon when she, and she thinks it's funny. It is a game for her and they are crying because her screams are so loud that they hurt the dog's ears and the bird just thinks it's hilarious that they're howling. And it does sound like a zoo in my house when that happens. So we've got our feathers on this macaw here. Now we're gonna finish off this tail end, change out the tail for different pieces so that it looked a little better, in my opinion. Let me know how you guys think the macaw came out. They do have pretty long tail feathers. I think on our macaw, her tail is just as long as her body, if not longer. Ours is green, and that's why they're called red fronts. She has a red patch on her head, and the rest of her body is green. So we're all done with our sign and putting it in place. I was trying to figure out the best spot for it. And I have added painting tables inside the cafe. And looking at some of the images of what it looks like inside, there's no way I can recreate these tables to look the same. I don't have that kind of skill. Not yet anyway. So I'm making a little cover for them to get kind of close. They had booth style seating on the inside so just giving that feel I use the East Asian wood pieces here 
They're really useful in a lot of areas and they're recolorable, which makes them amazing. I love FlexiColor. I need more FlexiColor in my life. So I've got one of the benches made and I was going to wait to see for some guests to come have a seat and of course they sit out here instead of inside. I had wanted to get some scale for how to make those benches. So I came outside. I had put one light here to remind myself to put lights into my planners. So while I let guests discover the new area, I'm going to go around and add these little lights in, duplicate the big planner, put it up by the back. I didn't like the spacing on that one, so I needed to fix it. And I'm still waiting for some guests to sit inside, not outside. So as you come into the Houston Zoo, they have some strollers for rental, and they're all under a little green cover. In some images, they have advertising on them, and in some of the other images, they're just a plain green. So I'm using the African sunshade and just turned it all green. And I'm using New World Posts to build the structure for the support. Copying it over to create the other sides. And as I was doing this, I noticed that the posts were longer than I wanted to be, but they'd be sticking out on the top. So I do go back and try to find a different piece so that I can replace the ones that are sticking out with something that doesn't do that. Ultimately, I end up building my own. I don't remember the name of the piece. And now I'm using the strollers I have gotten from the workshop. I will include the link in the comments below for you guys if you want to use that in your own builds and credit the person who created them. I didn't write it down, so I don't know it offhand, but I will put it down there for y'all. Finally, I have some guests sitting at a bench so I can finish the scaling process on my little custom covers here. Get the right height for back support. I could have left it low, but I like to look a little higher. And add in the table cover. And once I have all that settled, we'll go ahead and transfer that copy over to the other tables so they all look the same. If you guys would like this, I think I'll put it up on the workshop for you. Alrighty, we're here at the entrance of our zoo here. If you would like to see the most of it, you can check the first episode, well, the unofficial first episode, the entrance setup. So I'm just giving a quick look of what it looks like on the outside. And we come in and you have the animal talk point to the right with the aquarium. And here's the information hut. Again, I think I'm gonna drop it down into the ground that way I can probably hide some trash cans in there to keep the people from walking through it. And our stroller rental. I'm going to add some signs, I think, to it. And here we are at the McCall Cafe. So, I really liked how it turned out on the outside. I'm going to need to add more seating, more trees, based off of the images uh, going around the left side of the building there. And let's take a little look in. I love how the flooring has that nice little bit of shine from the glass on top. And we have somebody phasing through the wall to clean the table. So I'm going to mess with those paths, see if I can keep them from being able to do that. And I've placed a chief beef inside along with a gulpy slush. And just going back out, get a look at the space we have over here. Like I said, I do need to add a little more. And then when I come out this way, I can just get a look of everything. I accidentally stepped into the planner. Again, my camera controls are terrible. Get a screenshot. I like that angle. And a nice overview from an aerial view. And then over here is what I'm gonna work on this week. And I will have that out for you next Sunday. My plan is to put in a seal habitat 
The Houston Zoo has sea lions, but we're going to use seals. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you have a great day, and may the RNG odds be ever in your favor. Thank you.